So, in the last lecture, we had seen the basic tasks that are required to be performed by a digital camera. And we also mentioned about the non functional requirements. I once again repeat those for the sake of completion. One is that the images must be captured and processed within one second, that is a reasonable constraint. And that is a constraint matrix. We must optimize on the number of gates, so around 200,000 gates will be there. A smaller uh, solution is preferable. The power should be less, as less as possible and the same is for energy. And here we saw some informal way of functional specification, where we mentioned these steps that 0 bias adjustment, then discrete cosine transform, then quantization, then archival in the memory and that 64 by 64 image we take into 8 by 8 blocks. So, we repeat this 64 times. Now, that was the informal specification, right. Now, if we now we have to um, further refine this specification that can be actually executed. What we are showing here all these tasks taking the CCD input, pre processing it, doing the compression part and encoding and then storing it the memory, storing it in memory. All these things we need to test and here we can specify it in a much more refined way, where we can put an executable model of the digital camera. So, as if I am actually running the digital camera on software. So, here I will have a file that will capture the image, the image that the CCD is coming from the lens and is coming on the CCD. And whatever CCD does, I can write a CCD dot C program for that. Here everything is, we are using C or C plus plus code to describe every function. And that will provide us the insight into the system. Once you do that, I can do the profiling and see which part is taking more time. As I execute this bunch of C codes, I will see what is where the hot spots are, which one is taking more time, which one is uh, taking less time. Next, we come to another C code module, which is CCD preprocessing, preprocessing of CCD. We have seen what preprocessing consists of, preprocessing consists of 0 bias adjustment and then uh, we will have to do the, here is another model called codec where we are doing the compression. And for the compression, we are doing DCT here, right. Now, there is a controller module, which is actually controlling the invocation of all these C programs. And once this program is done, once this uh, steps are done, then we can come to this another module, software module called UART.C. What is UART? universal asynchronous receiver transmitter, right. That is for a sort of some CDL communication. So, through that we can send it to some output file to some computer, okay. And that is the overall functional specification. Now, once we get this functional specification, now let us look at the individual modules. I need not go into the details of the C code, because you know the functionalities already. So, what happens in this CCD dot C, it is simulating the real CCD, okay. It has got three parts, three other sub functions. One is CCD initialize, which one is uh, accepting the image file ID, file handler and the row and column indexes are initialized. Okay. Then comes the CCD capture. CCD capture is reading the image from the file. 
So, it is rewind image file handle and then for rows have to row in to the size of the rows. So, for us it will be the image will be 64 by 64 an internal loop up to column 64, we are scanning the image file reading the cam image file pixel by pixel right. So, because the light was incident on the different pixels and depending on the ima uh, image different intensities went at different pixels. So, we take that and we create a buffer all right we are writing that pixel on the buffer that is the capturing the image in the buffer. Then there is another function pop pixel that means, I am popping each pixel popping the pixels here pixel is getting the buffer row index that that one that is being captured by CCD capture. So, each pixel is being popped ok and if uh, and accordingly the row index and column index are being modified. So, that is the CCD module what is being done. Next in the flow is the pre processing module. In the pre processing module we will perform the 0 bias adjustment ok. CCD capture the one that I am showing again here uses here is CCD PP capture that means, pre processing we are doing here <coughs> what we are doing here for every row and column we are taking the pop pixel output ok. So, I got that uh, pixels now that pop pixel output and then I am adjusting the buffer. How I am adjusting the buffer? I am taking the values of the last two columns of those and dividing that by 2 that is my bias and that bias I am subtracting from the row and column index that one that I explained in the last lecture. So, thus I am doing the pre processing stage and uh, so again I am doing the pop pixel when I get the pixel I am doing the uh, remaining tasks here. So, we have done the CCD capture then we have done the CCD pop pixel uh, sorry CCD pre processing. Once the pre processing is done what is the next step that we should follow? The next step would be the compression part. Compression part so I am just keeping the URT module here and the compression part is being done by the codec module. It is modeling the forward discrete cosine transform encoding. The I buffer there are two buffers I buffer is holding an 8 by 8 block O buffer is holding the 8 by 8 block after compression codec push pixel called 64 time we will come to that here. So, here there are four one is just the declaration I buffer 8 by 8 O buffer is 8 by 8 fine. Then codec initialize is making the index to be 0. Now codec push pixel what it is doing is taking in the I buffer 8 uh, 8 by 8 the first 8 and is sending it over here. Now, what is it doing this codec do FDCT is forward discrete cosine transform all right. I am not uh, so here it is calling it is taking x y if you recall in that uh, discrete cosine transform expression we had the intensity as d x y and that was being taken and then that was being cosine transformed. So, here we are taking the x and y values for each pixel from the I buffer and doing FDCT on them on that right for a discrete cosine transform and putting that in the output buffer ok. And then the codec pop pixel is again putting that on the output buffer from the output buffer to the pixel ok. So, codec push pixel is called 
this one 64 times to fill buffer with original block right 8 by 8 and that will go on codec do f do fdct will be called once to transform the 8 by 8 block because that is being done here in the loop okay to transform and then codec pop pixel is called 64 times to retrieve pixel by pixel okay now fdct module here we need not go into the detail uh, you can try that in any uh, matlab and other tools but just to put it in the context this is the expression that we had shown for the cosine transform right now that for this cos part we are storing a cos table where the different values are stored and we will take the dxy and corresponding to the given x and y I will select the element from this cos table and we will multiply with it all right. So, this cos table is pre stored and uh, for this basis function 1 by square root 2 else uh, else 1 that is kept here. So, what happens here in this forward discrete cosine transform we are taking 8 rows 1 by 1 and for each element of the row x 0 x x 1 x 2 x 3 we are multiplying that with the cos value of the table which is pre stored right. We are putting over here we are normalizing it with 32 k uh, the floating point values are multiplied by this 32 k and you see here whatever we are getting from the cost table we are dividing that with this and that is chosen so that we get in two bytes of memory okay, 32 k for each of the multiplicants are coming in two bytes of memory. So, this in detail you can see in the textbooks or uh, in other material. But here for our purpose this is the code for the compression. Once the compression is done then we come to the controller module because the controller module is what is more important and look here the controller module is the heart of the system. It has got control initialize here where the number of rows and number of columns are specified. Next we control capture image first of all we have to capture image. So, we will cap we will do the CCD PP capture which we had shown earlier after pre processing and then we will invoke CCD pop pixel get this. So, that is being called first then here you will see control compress image the controller is is invoking the cont, uh, the compression right so basically what i want to say here is this that this flow is being maintained by so yes the controller is taking one row doing that uh, bias and then taking it row by row eight it's not row by row eight by eight and doing the compression right. So, that is being done by the controller and in the process it is <coughs> calling code codec push pixel it is calling do f c t and then it is also doing the quantization all right. The quantization is uh, it is taking the particular uh, table and then dividing it by a particular number 2 to the power something. So, integrating everything what we get is that uh, quickly let me also mention about this UART module this is very simple void UART send this is actually a half UART because it is only transmitting not receiving. Okay. So, void UART send a character f printf the character on the file that is simple UART. So, now 
So, we have to do what will be our task that diagram that we had shown is initializing the URT, initializing the CCD etcetera all the initializations and then I am simulating the functionality. For that I am capturing con the control capture image that is control capture image is this one which is being called which is invoking CCD PP capture which is invoking the CCD capture and then control compress image that means, it is calling this one which in turn is calling a uh, follower discrete cosine transform etcetera. Then control send image, the send image is somewhere here where it is sending through URT the upper byte and the lower byte. Okay. So, that is the overall flow. Now, if I now simulate this, then I can very well understand that whether my functionalities are all right, whether the data values are coming all right and uh, how much time it is taking or not exactly the actual time, but it will tell me the relative time where it is spending more time where uh, which are the hotspots in terms of more number of computation and all those things. So, now we will come to designing the system, we have seen the task and we have done the scheming, now we try to do the design. Now, design we will have to first determine the system's architecture. It can be processor any car I mean any combination of single purpose processors or general purpose processors, we will map the functionality to the architecture, we will do the implementation. So, at the starting point last bullet at the starting point let us start with a low and general purpose processor. First, we try to since we have to minimize cost, we first try to do everything on a general purpose processor. That will be the first test turnaround time because I will have off the shelf microprocessor and a flash memory connected to that. So, if I take a low end Intel 8051 microcontroller, the total IC cost will be around 5 dollars, nothing practically. It is well below 200 milliwatt of power time to market is small. However, where am I getting stuck? 12 megahertz and if I need 12 cycles per instruction, then I will execute 1 million instructions per second, okay. 1 12 megahertz and 12 cycles per instruction suppose. Then I will need 1 million instructions per second. So, CCD PP capture where I am doing the 0 bias that loop nested loop results in 4000 iterations if I look here, here CCD code CCD PP capture here it will be 64 times 64 iterations. Therefore, I will be needing uh, 4 k iterations and if I assume that per iteration there are 100 assembly instructions that means, I will have 400,000 instructions per image then half of 400,000 instructions per image and I will need 1 million instructions per second. So, half a second is gone I am assuming that 500,000. So, half a second is gone only for capturing and pre-processing the image and after that doing the computation intensive DCP and all those will certainly I will not be able to accommodate to my time constant of 1 second at the time constant of 1 second. Therefore, after doing this analysis I find that well single microprocessor solution will not do. So, what can I do? The second one is okay. the botheration here was with CCD uh, that pre processing part okay. that was bothering me that it up 50 percent of the budget. So, now let me try to do this on a single purpose processor an ASIC, ASIC or ASIC whatever I do, I do it on a separate chip. So, my architecture will look like I have got an URT, I have got some 8051 and there will be another CCD PP, CCD PP. Okay. Now, it will improve 
performance it will require less microcontroller cycles. However, it will increase the energy cost, but it is simple to implement the data path and few states. Okay, it is not because what are you doing there? What are you doing in the preprocessing? We are just doing subtraction, some averaging plus I mean we are doing the average and then subtracting. So, we can reuse some other subtractors and have a simple data path. And simple UART is also easily implementable. So, fine. So, now microcontroller here we can have a microcontroller core, core microcontroller thing okay. and from there all of you remember what is a core. We have got some cores already prepared and we have to synthesize on that. Um, so, that is already synthesized I am sorry that is already synthesized we have to put it on the mask and all those. So, a block diagram of an 8051 core will be some instruction decoder ALU some 4 k ram 128 ram 4 k rom and there will be controller. Now, this is not very difficult to do and we will have special program that will generate the VHL description of the whole thing. This entire thing is written in VHDL uh, when it when a particular design is offered to you as a core then the corresponding VHDL is given. So, you can synthesize from that VHDL okay, not a big deal. Similarly, the EART can be easily computed it will be uh, invoked this is the automata start then it will transmit the data till 8 bits are uh, sent then it will go to stop. So, this is the cycle. Okay. So, lower 8 bits will come to the RAM uh, lower address and upper 8 bits will come to the uh, memory mapped the I O devices. Okay. Now, so this is also simple designing an UART will not be a problem. Now, the CCDPP CCDPP the preprocessing we will have the FSMD desk C here we are giving. So, what we did earlier whenever we did some synthesis we started with an FSMD and did the synthesis that we did for the GCD algorithm that we also do for did for the square root approx approximation algorithm right. So, we now know how to do that we know how to schedule it and all those. So, now uh, so we can handle this from this FSMD. Similarly, the CCD PP what is it doing? It is idle row 0 column 0 it is getting row first of all it is not very clear the buffer row and column is getting the pixel and um, it is going why is it less than 66? I was having the image 64 by 64, but there were two extra row two extra columns. Therefore, I have to scan up to 66 and take the 65th and 66th columns and take their average, right. So, that is I am getting the row, computing the bias here and then fixing the bias, subtracting for all the elements in a loop. You see here there is a loop for all the 64, all the 64 columns, all the 64 columns. I correct the error 0 bias error and then I go to the next row all right in this cycle I go on I hope it is clear to all of you okay it's the 0 bias correction. So, that will be my FSMD of the CCD PP and then we can connect all all of these to make a system on chip. So, we had this I want to have this as a system on chip with all the things on one chip. So, that I can put that in the camera. So, the I O is memory mapped all single purpose processors and RAM are connected to the 8051 memory bus processor places address on the 16 bit address bus as a read control and all those things are done. Okay. That is my second implementation. So, in my second implementation what do I have? I have the CCDPP as a separate processor, dedicated processor or an ASIC and there is a 8051 and there is another UART. 
and uh, so as I do this as the communication is changing if I look at this here again now the UART originally the UART was take connected to the 8051. Now, the UART is being has to communicate with the bus. Therefore, my change in my hardware decision will also affect the software. Mm. So, I will change this here little bit of change where earlier I was just writing as if in a file here I am not doing that. Here I am going through a status register and as long as that is busy I am because I am looking at the bus, I am waiting whenever that is free, I am writing the data. So, this change I have to do because of the communication. Each decision, why do we call it hardware software co design? The reason is every time I am making a decision, that decision is affecting, may affect the other part also. Okay? So, that is always happening as is being shown here. that will increase your cost. The question is that why do we do it? We, we have got we are fixing some design decisions that this transfer will be done serially that we have decided. If we had done it if we had uh, no constraint we could have said that we will do it parallelly, okay, but that will increase the cost. So, we are not because that takes very little time even serially and that is not when you are taking the picture you are transferring into the PC and you are not so much hard pressed with time right that is why. Now, I have done the second implementation. How good is my second implementation? The first one I did uh, through some analysis. So, the typical way of analysis a standard way of analysis will be that I have got a number of VHDL codes. So, all these VHDL codes can be simulated this could be Vedilog codes as well. Okay. I simulate and I find the execution time, how much time it is taking number 1, but that is not the only thing time is 1. Then I am taking them and synthesizing them through a synthesis tool and looking at how many gets I am getting and from there I am estimating the cheap area. Remember our uh, non-functional constraint said we should restrict ourselves within 200,000 gate. Is that being this? Uh, respected. Also, we have looked to look at the power. So, this is how we will be doing the analysis of the different designs. right? Now, as I do the analysis of our second implementation, we find the total execution time for processing one image is 9.1 second, not done right our for one image we needed 1 second here it is coming to 9.1 second even after uh, dedicating a separate processing module for pre processing. The power consumption is 0.33 watt not that bad energy consumption is 0.3 joule total cheap area is 98000 gates. I am still in the range of 200,000 gates. Now, so can I do something can I add some more hardware to make it make the process fast. Okay. I can see that. So, now I look at implementation 3. The implementation 3 is looking at the microcontroller and DCT. All right. So, it should be initially I will do floating point, then I will come back to fixed point. So, 9.1 second is not meeting my performance. DCT operation is a prime candidate for improvement. Now, here at this level I can also see which one is consuming how much time. Okay. I can find out the hot spot that is called profiling and I can find out which are the culprits and here I can find. Uh, that the DCT is a prime candidate. So, execution of implementation 2 
shows that microprocessor spends most cycles in decision computation. Could design custom hardware for the DCT, but obviously that is a more complex and more design effort. Instead, so one thing is that I can do this where is it the DCT part which was the culprit now let us go. So, uh, our flow the next flow was the DCT now the DCT one I was trying to find this one yes here this part could be designed as a hardware just as we have done this one as a hardware, but that will be more complicated. Since that is becoming more complicated, what we can try to do, okay, uh, I'll keep it in software, but I'll work on the software specifications and modify the specification to see if something can be done. So let us uh, try to do that. What we do, the floating point DCT that was there, we found that DCT was using around 260 floating point operations per pixel and you know floating point operations consume much more time and we had 4 k pixels per image 1 million floating point operations per image and there was no floating point support with 8051. Therefore, the compiler must emulate that floating point and convert them to fixed point and do malt add etcetera. Therefore, 10 million integer operations were coming per Okay. Instead of floating point, if we had gone for fixed point operations, that would have saved much computation time because 8051 could do that. right? So, next we come to the fixed point implementation of the coding. So, as we go for the fixed point uh, representation of the cosine values this table changes. This table simply changes because now all these values we are will be doing in fixed point fixed point arithmetic with uh, 6 bits used for the fractional portion. So, what is done you know each fractional portion is converted to an integer when we do it in a fixed point. So, result of multiplication will be shifted right. So, the other things remain the same, other things remain the same, I simply change the cost table. So, the multiplication will not now be done in fixed point. Now, as I do that and analyze it, so I did not touch the hardware, I just change the computation and we find that we can do oh, still 1.56. Power consumption is same, energy consumption uh, what was the earlier one energy consumption point yeah. So, energy let me see the energy consumption was uh, 0.3 joule and here it became less right. So, battery life is 6 times longer by doing the you see. So, whenever in a mobile phone or in a laptop the it runs out of battery many things happen. How many fixed point operations you are doing, how many floating point operations you are doing that also affect the battery life. So, here just by making it fixed point we could save on the battery life our cheap area is even saved, okay. but our main constraint has not been met still it is 1.5 second. So, what can we do? the performance is closed. Okay. Now, we have got no option, but to implement the codec in the hardware. In the fourth option, we have to design the codec in the hardware. So, we want to do a single purpose, but I am not doing 64 by 64, I am just doing a codec for 8 by 8 and I will invoke it 64 times. So, as I do that, that codec design will again the codec software will be rewritten in uh, and then from the C code of the codec, I will take it to the VHDL 
in the fixed point version and then I will synthesize it. As I do it, then when I carry out the analysis, I find that the total execution time is now 0 0.9, well under 1 second, well under 1 second, it has become too fast. right? So, might be if I had time, I would have done smaller, uh, first I do 4 by 4 and call it a number of times, all those things could have been done, but however, so when I do this, so what did I do for this codec design? So I took this registers and convert it into, convert it into uh, VHDL and synthesize it. So we find that the time has been met. Power consumption is slightly in increased because of the hardware, right? Energy consumption is less. Can you tell me why? The power consumption is slightly increased, energy consumption is less. The reason is energy is integral over time. Now, the time is becoming faster and less amount is being done in the software. Therefore, my total energy consumption is less, battery life has become 12 times. Okay. Total chip area increased, of course because this codec has been done in hardware, 128,000 gates. That is a significant increase over previous implementations, but my constraints are satisfied. Okay. So, summary of the implementation, implementation 1 was not viable, implementation 2 you see 9.1 was the time from the 1.5, then 0.99, my constant was 1, I have made that. Now, this one is called the satisficing constraint or the constrained, uh, the constraint that I have to satisfy. I need not optimize on this, but these ones have to minimize as much as possible, but here again no minimization was given. It was told that it should be low enough. So, 0 0.33, 033 and 040, not a big deal. The gate size is the constant was given 200,000. It is well within that limit energy has reduced. So, that is a great product. So, we got this great product by iterative design, iterative design and this example has shown you that how we analyze our specification and look at the different components and see how uh, we can optimize, we identify the hot spots. So, summarizing what do we say? We start with the spec. We first of all, we have to do the proper task analysis, understand the task. Otherwise, you will not be able to fix where I need to tweak the design. You will not be able to understand where I will have to tweak the design. So, you have to understand this what is happening because suppose you, you say that okay, I will reduce the number of pixels. That will affect the quality of the image. So, what you can do and what you can do must be understood and for that you have to understand the application properly. Any embedded system designer must spend some time to understand the application. Then we looked at the performance and we have to do the analysis and it is an iterative cycle by which we see uh, that where the shoe pinches and there we have to see first of all whether we can do it with software if possible less effort, otherwise we will have to put in hardware. Okay. So, that was a nice example, which uh, summarized a number of things that we have done uh, till now. So, in the next class, we will look at some formal approach to hardware software uh, partitioning and we will move to optimization.